here we are in our new Sukkot, our new B'nai Tov site, ready for our first Sukkot here. I have been fondly reflecting back to when I was a little boy and in my first time being in a Sukkah, which was when I received my first lesson about Sukkot. Our special guest teaching us in the Sukkah on Sunday school then was Rabbi David H. Panitz of Temple Emanuel in Patterson. That was the first time he taught me and what a meaningful relationship was then begun. I particularly remember Rabbi Panitz teaching us about the Ushbizin. Ushbizin is an Aramaic word for guests. On Sukkot, we traditionally invite Ushbizin, guests. Not just real-life guests of family, friends, and others in the community, but special symbolic guests, guests of our ancestry. Seven guests, one for each of the days of Sukkot. Traditionally said to be the seven key shepherds of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, and David. When, however, Rabbi David Panitz first mentioned this, he said, our forefathers, plus Joseph, Moses, Aaron, and David. I then raised my hand and I flagged him down to stop. I said, Rabbi Panitz, this doesn't add up. He was confused and asked me what I was talking about. I said, Rabbi Panitz, you said our forefathers, plus Joseph, Moses, Aaron, and David. And that doesn't add up because you also said one for each day of the week. He looked at me confused, but interested as I continued. There are seven days in the week. But you said our forefathers plus Joseph, Moses, Aaron, and David. Joseph, Moses, Aaron, and David are four, plus our forefathers. And four plus four Rabbi Panitz is eight, not seven like the days of the week. As I was completing my explanation of my thinking, Rabbi Panitz started to smile, his face lit up. He seemed to light up with understanding and appreciation. He then clarified to explain. He explained that forefathers are not four in number, but are those who came before. And he then taught us that our forefathers are the first three generations of Jews, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He also explained that the fourth generation of Jews was the 12 tribes, where we do not all descend from the same ancestor, and thus certainly that fourth generation also has particular significance of its own. That turned out not just to be my first lesson on Sukkot, but it turned out to be my first lesson on homonym confusion, four and four. And four is actually what I am making our focus for our lesson here in our Sukkah to be today. Today, we are blessed to be here in this new year, this new and rather unusual year, in our sukkah at our new B'nai Tov site. B'nai Tov is the fourth synagogue of which I am aware, the fourth synagogue that my family has had a history in founding. B'nai Tov is the fourth religious institution to be based in this site since it was first built in the 1890s. This is the fourth location for B'nai Tov since our inception many years ago. This is our fourth different holiday observance at this new site. We began with Rosh Hashanah, we had Shabbat, we had Yom Kippur, and now here we are for Sukkot and, of course, another Shabbat. This Sukkot will ultimately culminate with the fourth Shabbat of this new year. The next Shabbat after that, we will get back to the beginning of the Torah, and we will read Bereshit. In the beginning, we will read about the creation of the magnificent world, and it is quite poignant to note here that it was on the fourth day of creation when God completed the material universe and brought into existence ultimately the sun, the moon, and the stars, and other celestial objects, including my namesake, Mars. The celestial purpose of the sun, the moon, and the stars was not only to emanate light, but also to divide the day from the night on Earth thus becoming demarcation of time. And they were made to be a signal to mark the days, the years, and the seasons. And do note, there are four seasons. So many fours for us to be pondering here. We are ready, we are here for Sukkot, and are surrounded by the four walls of our Sukkah. So many fours. In Judaism, four represents completion, wholeness, fullness. We talk about the four corners of the earth. We have the four cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west. And some kids will appreciate that we never eat soggy waffles. Anyway, and then on Rosh Hashanah, on day two this year, as day one was trumped by Shabbat, we had four shofar sounds, Tekiah, Shavarim, Teruah, and Tekiah Gedolah, the fourth making it complete. The fourth commandment makes us so much more complete as we honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We have our four matriarch mothers. And before we chant the Shema, we symbolically gather the tzitzit from the four corners of our talit, bringing together into more complete oneness. At our Passover seders, we drink four cups of fruit of the vine to remember four ways that God has been there to redeem us. 
we traditionally have the youngest child who is able to recite what some call the four questions, although there was actually only one question. Manishtana, why this surprise? Why is this different? But we do give four important answers, explanations. Again, in our Seder, we consider the four sons that represent four different types of people in this world that we need to consider how to approach, how to understand, how to communicate with. They represent four different types of people in this world, different mindsets, different potential, different needs, and different approaches we must have. Now, here we are in Sukkot, where we have the four species, our Ba'a Hamanim, the four plants, the four species that each have such special symbolism, particularly on this holiday of Sukkot. We hold and bring together these four species each morning of Sukkot, other than Shabbat. These four species coming together brings about more completeness. The willow, the arava, has no taste and no scent. It represents those who don't know what's right and don't do what's right. The leaves also look like and represent our lips, indicating our need to watch what we say and our need to say only what is right and good. The myrtle, hadas, has pleasant scent, but no taste. It represents those who don't know what's right, but at least they do what's right. The leaves also look like and represent our eyes, indicating our need to see what is right and watch what we do. Holding it all together in the center here. The palm, the lulav, has no scent, but does have pleasant taste. It represents those who know what is right, but don't do what's right. The lulav looks like and represents our spine, indicating our need to stand upright and to stand up for what is right. The citron, the etrog, has pleasant scent and pleasant taste. It represents those who know what is right and do what is right. The etrog looks like and represents our heart, indicating our need to have good hearts and act right with care and love. And I care that I promised these videos would be short and we're getting a little longer than usual here. And thus I will aim to wrap up for now. But if you wanna learn more, you're invited to join me in the Sukkah this week you're invited to join me in person elsewhere this week or elsewhere. You're invited to join me online. Let me know if you want to schedule a session. And you can ask me to elaborate on the power of the four species and why the Etro has a responsibility to come together with the others to bring about a better completeness for a better world, for a better tomorrow. I say to students sometimes, be an Etro. The goal ought be for each of us to know what is right and do what is right to know Torah and to follow Torah. Imagine a world filled with Etrogim. Wow. But we do not get to live in an imaginary world. Like it or not, we are to live in the real world. And in the real world, we each have responsibility to do what we can based on where we are and what we can do. Etrogim, you have a responsibility. If you know what's right, then don't just keep it to yourself. You can help others learn better. If you do what's right, then don't just feel good about it and sit back. You can help others do better, too. Again, call Yisrael Aravim Zelazeh. Call Yisrael Aravim Zelazeh. All of us are responsible one for the other. We make each other stronger when we come together. And I would be oh so glad to have us come together somewhere, somehow, soon. In the meanwhile, Lechag Sukkot Sameach Vela Shabbat Shalom.